the founder of uh, W Architecture and Planning. Um, one of my favorite, when I was sort of learning more about her history, I just wrote from Dubai to Baltimore, um, it, which I think sort of sums up her history. She's worked on projects all over the world at all different scales, um, a lot of adaptive reuse where she's reclaiming historic uh, buildings, a lot of waterfront projects. Uh, she had a firm in Baltimore for uh, 20 years and she worked for the city of Baltimore as well. Um, today she's going to talk about uh, nature and urbanism along New York City's waterfront. So welcome, Barbara. Thank you. This has really been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm oh, it's horrible lighting up here. I can't even see the slides as it's starting. All right, uh, that one is supposed to not be there anymore. I hope this is the right, the right version. Um, anyway, I want to talk about nature and cities. And uh, as a landscape architect and architect, people say, oh, good, you, you know, you get to deal with nature, and isn't that great? And, um, but actually what I deal with is a lot of cultural baggage. You know, really, landscapes are a cultural place. And uh, I think uh, Andy was talking about this a little bit. We, we try to help people envision what the world, you know, could actually be like. Because right now, a lot of people are still influenced by 19th century uh, visions of the world, which uh, sort of separated nature from the city, and that experience was seen as, as, a, as you know, separate, not not integrated. Um, now, in the 20th century, we're actually we're, we're ahead of this now, but in the 20th century, we actually got to see uh, the world as one one place uh, with space travel, and it helped us, you know, begin to understand that that there things are interrelated. Uh, so when we work on our projects. We uh, also try to take that, that back look. This is actually Baltimore. Uh, we'll work up to New York. Uh, but, you know, it's, Baltimore is a very industrial port city, but it's also a part of the Chesapeake Bay estuary. Uh, so these two images are what this place is about at the same time. You know, it's a, a lot of abandoned industrial land on the waterfront, but it's also part of the tidewater. So how do we bring these together when we're reimagining these places for cities today? Um, and uh, so what we, we think about is, you know, how can we, as designers, uh, bring that together? Here's a, the, an example as it's under construction, you know, bringing that sort of shifting ground and tidewater feel, but still keeping the industrial vocabulary into a, a sort of a new vision of a place uh, for the public. Oh, gosh, I thought I'd have trouble with 20 seconds. But <laughs> didn't think of long enough. Uh, so here's um, also uh, he's citing amenities as they, uh, again, trying to feel the power of water. So the amenities are, are placed as if they were maybe drifted in, you know, with a, with a big uh, rising tide. Um, and, and the presence of water also uh, is uh, ever-changing and, and part of the landscape in our uh, some of our water features uh, producing mists and fogs. So uh, this uh, character uh, bringing together industrial, uh, former industrial lands on the waterfront to new recreational use uh, is a big part of now in New York what, what it, we're trying to do. Uh, this is uh, in West Harlem. And again, you can see it, it's, in a band, it's in a parking lot totally paved with a line between water and land, or you know, it's a part of the Hudson River estuary, or I should say, and it's a part of the Hudson River estuary. Uh, and again, how do we bring that together? So here's, here's what we did from the air. Um, you can see that the new piers that we made come out like sandbars, so we're trying to show the influence of water. We also try to pick up the city grid and how it busts through 125th Street, uh, being a, a very different street in that valley there. Here's the cove, uh, what it looked like. Uh, it was historically a cove, so we tried to bring that feeling back, even though uh, with our budget we had to keep the existing bulkhead and couldn't re actually change the relationship to the water. Um, so, but you know, you have to really go beyond this kind of image that I've been talking about so far, the character, and get into actual working systems. Um, you know, how do landscapes actually work now in the 21st century? You know, we understand that, um, that they're, they're all interrelated, the systems. This is a mirror diagram in the middle. Oops, missed it. Well, anyway, we, so we have to bring things together. Um, this is bringing together the pedestrian out to the water, uh, right from the sidewalk, 
bringing the grid, lining up the, the uh, access to the piers. So there's no question as you're under this dark place of, of how you get out to the water. Uh, we also integrated bicycles, uh, kayaks, and other modes of transportation. And as a pedestrian in this very narrow space, uh, we also uh, wanted to use a geometry that was expansive and had diagonals and again was uh, taken really from sandbar formations and the diagonals that waves make as they, they cross into across land. Uh, and then at a more detailed level, we're trying to reuse elements that we found on the site. Um, these are some reused uh, bulkhead blocks and also some Belgian blocks that we found underneath that parking lot once we got rid of the asphalt. So we reused those uh, again to bring the character of the past uh, into the present. Here you see the, the pallet of materials. There's also uh, Hudson River pebbles as the aggregate in the concrete and um, other things that... Um, the rusted steel that bring to mind the maritime, former maritime uses of industry. Okay, uh, there are underutilized places, these street ends. You know, as the industry is left, there's sometimes these dead end streets that um, are poor. You could think of the water, whoop, water systems. Um, uh, the, land and, the land and the water really come together. And how could we use those streets to mediate between, uh, between the two and um, mediate rising tides, stormwater management, lots of different uses. So at a project in um, The Edge in Williamsburg, uh, we started to try to do that on uh, 7th Street, which is the straight one at the top that's on the city grid. It becomes pedestrian, it steps down to the water, eventually it'll step down all the way where you'll be touching the water as they continue. And then we also have this funny angled one that, uh, again, uh, looks like it might have been uh, pushed in by the water, um, like something got rushed ashore uh, by the forces coming in. Um, but actually, uh, that's a carefully choreographed view across the way, so again, you get a new perspective of your relationship uh, to Manhattan and the Empire State Building. So I, I guess I'm ending by saying we're hoping that uh, we help people see new ways of envisioning their environment um, and using it that they might not have thought of before.